hello, my name is Klaus Scott. This is part uh, 19 of a course on Java, and I'm going to talk about constructors and um, initializers. Okay, this is what I'm going to cover. Um, uh, start with a few basic facts about constructors, uh, then deal with um, super and this as um, as calls, basically, not as uh, not as references. Um, then um, instance initialization blocks, and um, uh, there's some prohibition in instance initialization blocks on what you can do in terms of forward references, and I'll discuss that there. Uh, then some details about exceptions in instance initialization. Uh, then I'll deal with um, class and interface initialization. Um, that's um, using things like uh, static initialization blocks. Um, then I give a load of examples, um, including one here. It deals with um, access before initialization, which, um, believe it or not, you can do. And um, uh, then I'll talk um, about startup. I haven't actually mentioned until now anything about startup, so I thought I'd put it in here because it's got to go in somewhere. So uh, this should all be pretty well known to you anyway, but uh, I'm going to talk about it there. All right, just a few uh, basic facts on constructors, just to recap what we already know. Uh, they use, of course, to initialize instance variables. Um, you've also got access to static stuff as well, by the way, of course. And um, they get called whenever you do something like a new followed by the constructor name and uh, any parameters it takes. Now, they've got uh, no return type, not even void. and um, you may actually inside the uh, body you may have a return statement, but um, it mustn't return a value. The the name of the constructor must be the same as the class name, including any capital letters, of course. And um, every class, including abstract classes, has to have at least one constructor. And if you don't declare a constructor, the compiler will insert a default constructor, and the default constructor um, doesn't take any parameters. Um, constructors are often overloaded, but um, they cannot be overridden. It just doesn't make sense. Um, uh, they can have any sort of access modifier, and um, if uh, the compiler is uh, going to supply a default one because you haven't declared one, then the access modifier is the same as the class. So if the class is um, public, then the compiler supplied default constructor will have public access. Whenever you call a uh, class constructor, its um, superclass uh, constructor is uh, made to run first. Right, uh, this is to illustrate what happens when you do new for a uh, constructor. And uh, what we've got here is uh, class B with a constructor in it, and uh, class A extends B and it's got a constructor as well. So when you do new A, this is what happens. Right, well that new, the fact that that's got a new there, means it triggers uh, this. It um, allocates an area of memory, and uh, space that it sets aside is enough to hold an object of um, type A, including its, um, uh, its superclasses all the way up the tree. So it allocates space for A, B and objects in this case, because objects at the top. So that's how much space gets allocated. And uh, then it um, uh, sets the initial values of uh, that area to um, its initial values. So um, as you know, primitive um, types, the initial value is default value is 0, and uh, for references, the default value is null, which is almost certainly 0. So effectively, what it does is zero the area out that it's allocated. And then, um, then it calls A like that, and um, it passes into A. Um, the uh, implicit uh, object reference it passes in is for that allocated area. And the first thing A does is call um, 
the constructor of the superclass. So the first thing it does is call B like that, again passing in the same reference. And this continues all the way down the tree to object. And then right at the bottom here, it terminates an object, does any of its initialization, and returns back to B, which continues where it left off and carries out this initialization of the fields of B. In it B there, that's what it does. And then it returns and in it A gets its chance to run to initialize the fields of A. And uh, then it returns back to where it's called from here. And you've got a value of uh, constructor, an object of uh, class A. And uh, that's how it's done.